Great. So um, thank you for coming to this session. Uh, hopefully it will be interesting. We have uh, 30 minutes. I'll try to speak for maybe 25 uh, minutes or so and leave some five minutes, at least five minutes for questions. And um, uh, today we'll be talking about Hyperledger Iroha version 2. Um, some of you may not be familiar with Hyperledger Iroha version 1, so I'll give a, a brief overview um, as well. Um, and and uh, as an introduction, I'm uh, Makoto Takemiya. I'm the uh, group CEO and co-founder of Soramitsu. Um, so today I'll talk a little bit about, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll say a few words about Hyperledger uh, V1, uh, Iroha V1, and then I'll talk about Hyperledger Iroha V2, uh, some of the overview, uh, where the code is located, how's, how's it structured, how would you set up the network, um, what are Iroha special instructions, uh, and different things like this. So that way you can learn um, some of the basics of the network and some of the philosophy, and then figure out uh, maybe how you can use this in your um, own applications. So uh, for those who don't know, I'll just say for a couple of seconds about uh, my company, SR Mitsu. So we were founded in 2016. Uh, we actually joined Hyperledger Project in 2016 as well. Um, and uh, we contributed uh, Hyperledger Iroha uh, uh, along with uh, several other companies like NTT Data and uh, uh, Dutch and Kolu. Uh, back in 2016, and we've been working uh, as an active maintainer of the project since then. Um, we use it in many of our applications, including uh, uh, our work with the Central Bank of Cambodia on a really exciting project uh, called Bacol. Uh, there was some other, another session uh, that I think Brian was uh, chair of that uh, talked about um, CBDCs, and if you didn't watch it, uh, I, I encourage you to, to find the video and maybe see it. it it's very interesting. Um, but that project uses uh, Hyperledger Iroha uh, V1. Uh, we've done many other projects as well um, over the years. Uh, for those who don't know, so we focus a lot in, in Hyperledger Iroha on uh, mobile interfaces and being able to connect uh, people um, or connect to applications that people build uh, in a mobile context. And so Project Bakong, which we built with the Central Bank of Cambodia, is actually the world's first retail payment system run by a central bank using blockchain uh, that launched with real money back in 2019. Um, and it's it's quite an exciting system that uses uh, Hyperledger Iroha at the core of, of the system. Um, but uh, today I'll be talking about Iroha uh, V2. Oh, actually, uh, so <laughs> this system actually, yeah, we won several awards. Um, so that's that. Um, so, so before I talk a little bit about Iroha V2, um, I think it's important to kind of understand some of the philosophy of, of what we, um, you, you know, what the original context or vision of Iroha was. And really it was to create something that's kind of a simple um, blockchain that doesn't try to do too much, that really focuses on high performance and low latency and uh, focusing on mobile uh, interfaces in particular. So building uh, libraries and different SDKs that can help with mobile apps uh, has been a very uh, big push. Um, and then also Iroha uh, tries to be blockchain. So it's really, um, it means that more in like um, like a traditional context. So instead of, instead of trying to be like a glorified database system or, you know, trying to do too many different things at once, uh, it, it really is kind of like a traditional blockchain where you have a set of validators and all the validators don't trust each other. They, they get the data and they verify it all. So uh, this means that they see all the same data and they verify it. And that has um, implications for, uh, for the types of con contexts or applications that can be, uh, that you can use either hot in. Um, and so, uh, in Iroha version one, uh, we also tried to focus on uh, limiting the scope of the blockchain platform so that you couldn't really do too many things, like uh, you couldn't do Turing complete or um, uh, user defined uh, smart contracts that would be defined at runtime. Instead, uh, if you wanted to have new functionality, you would have to write this code in the original uh, C++. Uh, so Iroha one was in C++. And uh, this was done really because we do focus a lot on financial applications and a lot of, uh, a lot, a lot of users, for example, central banks, don't really want to have too much uh, flexibility. In fact, having 
uh, less flexibility in what you can do actually reduces the attack space, right? So it's, it, but it has trade-offs in that uh, doing new things is, is more costly or takes uh, developer resources. Um, in Eder2, we're trying to improve on uh, some lessons that were learned. Uh, Eder2 is written in Rust, which is um, which is kind of a, a more and more, it's a language that's getting more and more popular um, over time. If you haven't used it, it's really a lot of fun. Um, the learning curve is, is somewhat steep, uh, but so is C++. Um, so I, I like, uh, so I've, I've written, you know, code in many languages, including C++ and including Rust. And uh, what I like about Rust is that it's a little bit less flexible. So the compiler is very strict about what you can do. And uh, this actually forces you to design things in a kind of a more standardized way. So it's actually easier. Uh, I, I would say it's easier to work in an open source or open context because you don't, um, there's not as many degrees of developer freedom in some ways because uh, the language kind of forces you to, to do certain, like certain styles. And so this, um, this makes it easier to work with other people's code and to also, uh, yeah, it's, you don't have a lot of problems like you would have in C++ where you can, you, C++ uh, has a big uh, range on, you know, if you're a very highly skilled C++ developer or kind of a novice, um, the quality of the code is very, very different. In Rust, it kind of forces everyone to be closer to the same uh, level. Uh, Rust, Rust also, the compiler, is able to, to optimize code uh, pretty well uh, because it's a very strict uh, uh, compiler. So um, it, it's in many contexts. It's easier to get faster running code than Rust than C++ if you're if you're a novice to C++, uh, like I am, for instance. Um, Eduard two is, is also very opinionated about um, how uh, data processing is and data handling is done. So uh, we we keep all data in memory, and uh, of course, this doesn't mean that you lose data when the system crashes or something. Um, all blocks. And, and the blocks are kind of like the atomic unit of, uh, you know, state change in the system. All blocks are updated atomically on the disk uh, when they come in, along with the in-memory data uh, storage. So in-memory data storage, uh, we have a in-memory block store, and then also in-memory uh, world state view that has a different account, um, uh, like state data. So for example, uh, how many assets uh, a, a certain account has. Um, so all, this, all these data are kept in memory, which makes validation of transactions extremely fast. Um, we don't even use like an in-memory database. We use kind of Rust level uh, maps or hash maps. So it makes it really, really, really fast. Um, so you don't have any overhead. And this was done partly because in Ederhog V1, we did see a lot of the uh, bottlenecks were uh, related to data processing. And e e uh, V1 is actually still under active uh, maintenance. You know, with many, it has commu community around it. People are contributing code. Um, currently, it's being up up upgraded uh, to use a uh, key value uh, database. And that's a lot faster than PostgreSQL, which, which it was using before. Uh, but I would say V2 takes this to a whole nother whole level uh, by keeping all the data in memory. And it makes it really, really exceptionally fast. Um, we're also trying to uh, give people more flexibility. So being able to support uh, turn complete computation uh, that's user defined um, uh, at runtime, basically. So being able to define your own smart contracts uh, while the system is running is really an important um, uh, design goal that we have. Uh, initially, this is based around what we call either house special instructions and all. Uh, I'll introduce these. These are not currently uh, Turing complete, but in the future, we're you know reviewing several proposals with the community, and one of them is to um, include a Wasm VM, uh, and then that way people can compile um, really any language uh, that they like uh, to Wasm, and then uh, and then run uh, their smart contracts that are you know user defined uh, when the system is running. There's advantages and disadvantages um, to this, of course. Uh, it, it makes uh, compilation a little bit harder uh, because uh, the, the version of Rust you, you support has to be more specific currently. Hopefully, someday, there'll be better uh, language support for this. <clears throat> um, so Eduard V2 has been in dev for 
a little bit more than a year, like maybe 15 months. And uh, it's, yeah, it, it's still not uh, at the first uh, stable release, but it's, it's come pretty far and the network uh, actually should be running stably. Um, and you're able to, um, to use the current uh, Idraha special instructions that I'll show off in today's presentation. Um, kind of as uh, yeah, one of the introductions, Idraha 2 uses, uh, as did Idraha 1, uh, kind of a very simple data model. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, so um, I had to type on the slides. So instead of saying commands, it should say instructions. <laughs> and maybe tell us that. Um, so uh, and a domain is like a grouping of, uh, of asset definitions and of accounts. And an asset definition is just, um, you know, a name and then has maybe some other metadata, uh, for example, what, what type of asset it is. Is it like a key value map, like a complex asset, or is it a, um, is it like a, a currency that has a quantity? Um, so you can define these and I'll show you how um, using uh, Idraha special instructions. And, um, and then you have accounts, and accounts are uh, some you know, data that has a set of signatories, and the signatory is just a, a public key, basically. So you can have one or more public keys, and you can have a quorum uh, defining uh, how the public keys are used to sign transactions. Um, and accounts can also have assets, and our assets are instance instantiations of, uh, of the asset definition. So you could have like an asset definition for US dollar, and, um, and then your account has 100 assets, um, which are instances of a US dollar definition. So this is a very simple data model. Um, it, it, it's, it easily incorporates um, basically any use case you would want because uh, an, asset an asset definition is really like an object. And so um, if, it's, if you interpret it like uh, you know, like a currency or something else that's really up to the to the business logic that you have. You can you can deal with many different types of situations. Um, okay, so GitHub structure. So let's say that I wanted wanted to help kind of join the community and maybe let's go. Um, you can first go to Hyperledger Roha as on GitHub. So GitHub slash Hyperledger slash Roha. Um, as V2 is still under active dev and there's no stable release yet, uh, currently um, the, the main branch uh, is, uh, is Idraha version one. And then if you want to go to version two, you have to go to Idraha two or Idraha dev. Um, Idraha two is updated um, occasionally, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we don't have a, like, uh, a really well-defined release cycle for, for it yet. So, um, you can probably at this stage use Idraha 2 dash dev uh, branch, and uh, this should always be compiling and running because uh, we have a lot of GitHub actions that will run uh, tests upon uh, pull request, and we don't really um, we, we try to keep it you know fairly stable so that uh, there's no uh, you you, sh you shouldn't have a situation where you uh, try to run Idraha 2 dev and it you know doesn't start up or something, um, but. Yeah, I mean, if you want to use it in production, you should uh, be a little bit careful because it is, uh, you know, still under active development. But uh, it's it's fine for um, playing around with even today. Um, and, uh, and and the code is is reasonably high quality and, and shouldn't have any um, any known like major defects other than uh, you know lack of um, functionality implemented. <laughs> so uh, the, fun the implemented functionality should be working pretty well. Um, it's kind of uh, organized into a set of different crates that are compiled. So, for example, we've got uh, Idraha uh, Crypto, we've got Idraha um, Client CLI, um, you know, different things like this. So, it, it should be pretty easy to kind of understand um, how it is, and you can build these kind of separately if you want to. Uh, for cryptography, we use uh, Hyperledger Ursa. Uh, so, we try not, to, I mean, obviously, writing your own crypto is a bad idea. So, we we don't, we use Ursa. Um, so you can check this out and uh, you know, play around with the, the dependencies and things like that if you want. Okay, so um, yeah, that's kind of uh, some of the uh, overview of GitHub. Let's move on. Um, 
let's say I wanted to play around with this and try to check it out. Like, what could I do uh, today? Um, so you could set up your own Etherhub V2 network. Um, I, I gave a demo this morning about it. I'm not going to go into that level of detail now, uh, but I will just say um, uh, you you'd build the Etherhub client. Um, or sorry, Crypto CLI. Um, this should be a crypto. <laughs> You, you build the Etherhub Crypto CLI uh, and uh, use this program to uh, to generate your own uh, keys. So if you run the script, it gives you an ED25519 um, uh, private and public uh, key pair, and then uh, you can take these uh, uh, these pair uh, these each um, server that you want to run. Like let's say if you want to have four different servers, you have a config file in each server, and then you, you plug in your private key and, and the public key here. And uh, this, uh, you don't have to use ED25519, I think. Uh, so we support maybe some other cryptography that's in URSA. <clears throat> but um, but yeah, it's, it's recommended uh, to probably not play around with this too much um, if, you, if, if you don't know what you're doing. Um, I mean, you can read some of the uh, explanation in, in the GitHub, but uh, basically, uh, if you want to set up your own node, you would get this config file from GitHub, just setting up a port that you want to run. Um, for the P2P traffic, this is between nodes on the network, and then API, which is the external query nodes. Um, and then uh, you do need to define a genesis block, and you need to uh, have like a public and private key associated with this. Uh, so that the data are um, uh, so this this is uh, uh, the genesis uh, block is validated. Um, so you have just a simple JSON format uh, that you can define your genesis block in. Genesis block is just a list of transactions. Um, I think you don't even have to have anything, but that would be a very boring network without any user accounts. Um, so, like in this example here, you would just have like ISIs, which are the either host special instructions, which I'll talk about, and then you can register. Um, you register first a new domain called Wonderland, and then you register a new account called Alice, and then you can register uh, a new uh, asset called a rose, asset definition, a rose that's inside Wonderland, and it has a type of quantity, which means you can have like a quantity of, of uh, roses. You, you can have different value types um, as well. Um, and uh, let's see. And then you can have your user Alice in Wonderland, and you give Alice um, a, a rose. You, you actually give 13 roses, because uh, it's this mint uh, command. So you're minting uh, new rose assets uh, into uh, Alice at Wonderland's account. Pretty straightforward. You can, uh, this is just a genesis block. So this kind of defi uh, defines the first first account that maybe has some, some assets and, and permissions, and uh, then you can kind of do everything around that uh, genesis. And then finally, the third thing that you need to start up network node is a trusted peers file, and this just has um, the initial peers that you have. You can add new peers and remove peers from the network um, using uh, either host special instructions uh, during runtime, but you need at least a quorum of peers um, uh, to start out with. And the number of peers you need is actually, um, so the consensus algorithm is called Sumeragi, and uh, in Sumeragi, there's a max fault peers parameter. If you run it locally with just one peer in, on your own system, you would just make this zero. If you want four peers, you, you make this one. So you have a 3F plus one uh, fault, fault tolerance of F. So if you want to tolerate one fault, you need 3F, three times one plus one. Um, so four nodes. Okay, so that's how you set up a network. You just make config.json file, genesis.json, and trustedpeers.json. And you do this for each of your peers. And actually, this morning in the demo, I started up uh, a network, and it's still running uh, locally. It hasn't crashed or anything. Um, one thing I'll just point out is uh, Edrha2 doesn't uh, create blocks just for, for the fun of it. Um, you have to have transactions in your block. Um, so that's why it's not like creating a bunch of blocks. But if I go uh, to my uh, command line, and if I run a command, like let's create a new domain called, um, 
hold the night talk. Um, it's the main, and you can see that we now have a new height block headed nine because it just generated a new block that contains my register uh, transaction. Blocks are created. Uh, the settings are here in the um, config.json. So um, here it's, it's one second uh, per block. So if you get a bunch of transactions being sent every second, they're going to be uh, grouped together in a block. Um, and now I have nine blocks, and you can see these blocks. The blocks themselves are not so interesting to look at uh, for humans. Uh, we use a parity scale codec uh, to, uh, to store uh, blocks, as I recall, which is a very efficient binary format uh, used in Pope Doc. Um, okay, so let's go back and talk a little bit about Ederhaus special instructions. So Ederhaus special instructions are, are kind of um, yeah, a list of different uh, kind of building blocks that you can kind of piece together to do lots of things. And you might have seen some of this if in my explanation just now of the Genesis block, for instance. So uh, to make a, um, to make a, here, let's take a look, uh, to make a register domain. Uh, so uh, there's like the register instruction that is just register, and you can reg call register on different objects. So you can call it on a domain to register a domain. You can call it on a new account to register an account. Uh, you can even call it on a asset definition to register a new asset definition. So it's kind of like, um, yeah, you have this kind of like a core command or instruction called register, and then you've got unregister, which, which does the other thing. If you want to add a new peer to your network, I think you call register and then like the peer ID. Um, and unregister would remove the peer. Uh, to create a new asset, you mint it, and you can burn the asset to kind of get rid of it. You can transfer the asset. Um, there's some conditional uh, logic in using if uh, if clauses. Um, this uh, this should work for really cool use cases, like for example, conditional multisig, where if you want to um, to define uh, like some signatories on an account, uh, you'll be able in the future to um, uh, to, to like uh, set up an account so that if you're sending more than 1,000 of an asset, you'll have to have three signatories, and if you send less than 1,000, you'll have two. You know, different rules like this that you'll be able to define just by piecing these different things together. So that's kind of the the idea um, to kind of create this like basic uh, something like a domain-specific language uh, that you can kind of piece together. Um, right now, it's not turn complete. Actually, you can make it turn complete by um, implementing uh, triggers uh, on top of these that would be kind of like you know, event-based uh, functional programming, which, we, uh, which we're exploring, but uh, it, it takes a little bit of research. If you're interested in this topic, I'm very happy to, um, you know, to, to have uh, any, anyone collaborate. Um, OK, so how would we use some of these uh, ISIs? Uh, so the either has special instructions. So for example, um, you can play around with our Iroha client uh, CLI, which is a command line tool. Um, in the future, this will be probably deprecated with a nice Python library, but um, it's still under under work. Um, for now, if you wanted to register like an account, you can go uh, to your command line and register an account. Uh, you have to give it a key, at least one key uh, to be like you know to to do the transaction verification. Um, so I just called, uh, created a domain called uh, Night Talk because it's nighttime where I am. Um, so you can hit this and ooh, let's see what I uh, type. Uh, I see what's wrong. So in Keynote, uh, it, it kind of takes my double dash line and turns it into one line, which is not um, cool. You have to do two dashes. Cool. So uh, that created my new, um, I registered an account, Makoto Night Talk. And then uh, these, <laughs> the payload's not very fun to look at, but um, <laughs> you can see the different byte values. Uh, uh, this should probably be simplified a little bit, but hey, it, it, uh, it works. Um, and then uh, I can create a new asset um, if I wanted to. So like this would be like kind of like the equivalent of a ERC20 token. Um, in Ethereum, uh, so just like a simple asset um, here, piece of that line. Um, so this is a type quantity, meaning it's like a some kind of token. Um, let's put it in our byte talk domain, and um, 
I don't know, is there a cool, a cool name for this? Um, I'll call it NHD for night, night token or something. Um, so we just created a new token. And um, actually, you can see all the assets by calling list assets. So yeah, account, uh, sorry, asset list all. And so you can run this, and you can see um, we've got Idra token, which was made this morning. We've got some roses, and we've got, um, where did it go? <laughs> Maybe I'm missing something here. Where did it go here? NHS. Ah, it's because I didn't mint any um, any instances of the asset. So I'm just looking at the definitions. So we need to mint uh, mint some quantity. So we can just go over here, and I think um, quantity has to have again double dashes, otherwise it will fail. Uh, this would be the asset would be uh, NHT at night talk. I'm, I'm almost done here. Almost out of time, too. Oh, I gave it to Makoto Iroha World. Let's give it to Makoto uh, at Night Talk. Let's mint some more tokens. Why not? Um, cool. And then uh, I can just go list all. And then, you can, yeah, you can see the NHT asset now. Uh, that Makoto, Makoto Iroha World has, and then also that Makoto uh, Night Talk has in its quantity 1337, which is very cool. Um, and, and you can just keep going. You can combine all these different things. Um, you could send, uh, for example, Alice um, some Iroha tokens. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, different things like this. So anyway, I think you get the idea. Um, we're almost out of time, so I'm just going to kind of like um, go to the chat if I can find it and see if there's any questions. And if there's no questions, I'll ask my own questions. And um, feel free to. Uh, so somebody wrote, uh, have you done any performance benchmarks with the v2? If so, how does it compare to v1? It's a good question. Um, here, I'll stop sharing my screen because it's kind of distracting, maybe. Um, so yeah, so it, it's it takes some time to do proper benchmarks. Um, in fact, we're having a hard time uh, creating tools that will uh, give transactions fast, fast enough to Iroha V2. Um, we've, yeah, but we recently set up uh, like our own kind of network to test uh, longevity and we created, um, so we have a, a, a Java library that we used along with JMeter um, to create, um, like just create a bunch of transactions and test it. And um, Iroha V2 is quite fast. Um, I don't really want to say any specific numbers because we've only really tested it on a small network, and uh, but it's it's like thousands of transactions per second, so it's pretty fast. I mean, it's it's really nice. Somebody asked a great question. Um, you know, P two is in Rust. Its SDK is still supported uh, by Python, JavaScript, etc. Is it right? Okay, this is great. So basically, what do you do with SDK? So. Um, uh, so for, for SDKs to really be nice for humans to use, you have to kind of put a lot of care into the writing of them. And uh, for Android and, and uh, Java, we have uh, kind of a, a rudimentary library that you can use. Um, and we're currently improving this. And we're also looking at having some people work on a Swift uh, version, a Swift library for iOS. Um, for Python, uh, there's a Rust uh, cargo crate that um, that will kind of like put a wrapper around your uh, your Rust uh, compilable um, using. I think it actually uses the some you know something related to C and Python in order to do the bindings. Um, but it's pretty. It's pretty. Looks pretty nice. We're actually testing it this week. Um, we haven't actually used it yet, so I, I can't really say much about it. But um, it looks really helpful. Um, so hopefully soon you'll be able to use Python. And for JavaScript, we do have another, uh, I think, at least a draft version of a JavaScript library that people can use. And it's going to get better. Um, somebody asked what's the main difference between Hyperledger Fabric and Hyperledger Iroha. Well, I mean, there's a lot of differences. So the philosophy is very different. The, um, the way things are built are different. So which, which platform you use depends a lot on what you're trying to do. Iroha 2 tries to be a lot simpler and less, you know, 
less overhead. And also, um, all peers should have all the data. So in Fabric, they have like different you know, channels and things like that, and, and double layer consensus that happens maybe not with uh, data validation, but with like a, a, you know, just a hash, um, hash ordering. And that's not really what we, well, it, it's not the design choice that um, is in Idroha. So Idroha is a little bit different. So, um, so you should look at them, understand which ones are best uh, in order to use in your projects. Um, so yeah, we're mostly done. I think we're out of time now. Uh, so thanks for joining. Um, you know, you can connect, you can go to our GitHub page. Uh, I think there's some links to the chats and um, feel free to join, uh, you know, Rocket Chat, Telegram, whatever, uh, Gitter, and, uh, and ask questions, get involved. Um, yeah, to check out Idraha2, just uh, check out Idraha2-dev branch and then hit cargo build and it should run for you, hopefully. I haven't had trouble at least. So have a good day, everyone. Thanks a lot. Um, and I think that's all we have.